basically do is first thing you always want to do is look into direct substitution because again remember what we're looking for is what is the value what is the limit approaching right what are we getting very very close to so you know if you guys think about this does anybody know what this does anybody know what this limit looks like offhand off top there does anybody know what this looks like okay so let's just pretend you know with something like that right well let's pretend here's two if I know the value at two comma whatever this is, right? Whatever some y value. Whatever that y value is, that's what the limit is approaching, right? So as long as we have a, you know, is what it, if we can find out what that value is, then we know that's what the what the limit approaches from the left and the right. This was that first graph that I talked you about. So as long as we can plug in two, and let's look at this. Can we plug in two into this equation? Is there any issues with plugging in two? I don't see any. So I would just plug in two. So 2 squared is 4, minus 4 times 2 is negative 4, minus 5 is negative 9, over 3 equals negative 3. So that value ended up equaling negative 3, right? Because that's your negative 3, right? So 1, 2, 3, there's negative 3, and you guys agree with me from the left and the right, that's what it's approaching, right? So the easiest, bestest, fastestiest way to evaluate a limit is just to apply what we call direct substitution, plug it in. All right, but that's very important because that only works when you can.